Gundam.tk presents High Grade Adele. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert, one of you for Two Hours Two Bs Gundam Reviews.net. And you've already seen the unbox and all those empty plates, including, I shouldn't really say empty because they've got a lot of H1 normal parts left over, but they've all been turned into these parts, and you can check out that in the previous part. But now it's time to turn these into the mobile suit version of the High Grade Adele. When he's all done, I think you've got something that Tony Stark would actually be pretty proud of in the form of the Adele. It looks very gruntish while still looking 25 years after the normal and pulling it all off. And that color scheme certainly helps. It's great to have the white and the blue and the white and all of that interspersed throughout the body. That chest has to be its most attractive part to go along with that clear visor on the head, which going back to the Genesis, or the Genoas, I'm sorry, not Genesis, is a fantastic bit of age and something that I really think adds a very cool look to the grunt suits in the series. For the posability, you're able to bring the skirts up here for a forward 90 degree kick and the side skirts, if you get them up and out of the way, you'll see that they're not going to bend up anymore on that PC9 there, almost 180. Well, if you wanted to do the legs all the way across, you can see that the knees are going to bend very well. They're not going to give you much more than 135 though. And then you've got the ankles, which are going to give you fantastic mobility. And if you don't mind the fact that this is a little finicky, you can certainly pull off a lot of cool poses and it'll always be somewhere that's visually attractive. For the upper body, I'll have a comment about the shoulders in a minute, but you can see that it's going to rotate here and move ever so slightly on that gray part. You can spin the shoulders around here, you can move them up and down here, you can move these parts up and down ever so slightly if you want, because that shoulder part there is going to have that part built into it, which is fantastic that they can do that in 1 1 44th scale. The arms are going to come up, and remember those forearm parts flip around, and the head, being on a PC6, is going to move around like this. Arming them up isn't hard, and you're going to have the same luck keeping the shield on here that you do with the H1 normal. Pretty good, but you don't want to push it too much because it is just attached by a small part. You just have to flip around that forearm guard, and remember that my rifle here is missing a gray part on the back. All you have to do is pop off the cover for the, head, for the hand to get that on there. And a couple things, I, the skinny shoulders has certainly grown on me. I think that really adds to the grunt feel. And also, though, the only thing that I'm not too pleased about is that when you look at it, it seems like the shoulder doesn't want to fit all the way on there. It just seems like the peg is a little bit too long. And what that seems to indicate, though, is either a design build or a design flaw, or I just plain built it wrong. But anyway, in some angles, you can really see those skinny parts there, and it's just not that pleasing to the eye. For height comparison now, you can see that there's not that many visual similarities between the two of them, between the shoulders being different and the legs being very different, along with those waist skirts. I've got to say that the Adele certainly doesn't seem like a cheap copy of the Age one and again it just has that perfect mix of looking newer than it at the same time and still looking like a grunt suit. You can see though that in terms of head height with the sparrow legs being attached on to the G-Bouncer here, that the G-Bouncer especially with that backpack and his wolf ears is just going to be a little bit taller and they certainly didn't have the best debut in the anime but it's only going to get better once we get the Adele and Diva colors. Next to its advanced grade counterpart, which is exactly half the price, you can see that the high grade is going to be a fair bit taller there. The big difference is being, that even though you do have white here on the feet, you're going to have all white legs, which doesn't look right. Nor does the waist skirt not having that little bit of white in there. The shoulders, though, is not going to be bad because you're really only missing the gray here on the elbow and the hands. The head has everything pretty much except for that white part underneath, and the most important thing being the chest and the shield that that's actually faithfully recreated. Please remember though that I borrowed this rifle from the age one advanced grade, so no, it's not like that out of the box. And while not a size comparison per se, you've got these two suits, the Titus and the Sparrow, which along with the G-Bouncer, is going to play a pretty large role in how much I enjoy this high grade kit overall, as you'll see in a few minutes. And finally, some second generation suits that I'm sure we're going to see a lot of these guys a die over the course of the battle, thanks in no small part to ace pilots like Asim and Zehart. Two posing now, where if you've seen my review of the H1 normal, you can imagine that with pretty much the same inner frame and two thirds of the plates being the same, that this guy's going to be very similar, so no problem looking down the barrel, and remember he also does have that extra manipulator for slightly more dynacism. With the shield across and without the beam sabers in the holsters though, you can imagine that a whole bunch of these guys would be breaking up some sort of an Occupy Angel protest or something like that in the future. The beam sabers are going to look a little bit uh, unusual just because you've got the white parts covering up the hand to go along with the beam handles there. 
And I tried to open up the shoulder parts there, but they're not going to look that great. They're not really going to add anything dynamic to it, but it is still cool to have more moving parts than less. And fully equipped with the rifle, incomplete as it is, attached onto the back, and dual wielding. I wonder if Asim's going to be the only guy allowed to do that this generation, but you can see that the shoulders are going to open up and allow that arm to go all the way through, so it's actually not a bad feature to have on a high-grade model. If you happen to be a Wolf fan, you can actually interchange the parts from the G-Bouncer, which is great. You've got this part here, which I like because it's got that little bit of fin and that race car spoilish, which we've seen since the age one, and that extra white part, but if you pop this part off, which is no part or difficulty whatsoever, you can take this off Wolf's back and... And from the side of the box, I had to say that it looked a little bit too white when it was attached on, but when you see the amount of white through the body, especially from the front, those white backpack and the thrusters, they really don't look out of place, and they certainly are a cool feature to have for a high grade, which is just a little bit of added value plus for a 1200 yen kit. But even though we haven't seen it in the anime yet, and I wonder if it's going to be the Diva Adels in their purple, as opposed to this one in the teal that does it, remember that you can swap all of the body parts onto this age one frame. And though the pose isn't as exciting, this color scheme works a little bit better than I expected, and though it's very common rider-ish to be swapping stuff on and off and have a whole bunch of these color variations, I liked what they did with the wear system for the age one, and though the Adele's head, this really does look like a grunt, and I'm not really sure if you should have such a cool knife or if that's flit only, but the blue and the teal seems to work and might work even better with the diva colors, and the shoulders certainly are not out of place, although again, they are going to be a little bit too separated from the body for my liking. And I don't know what you think of the red compared to the blue on here with that teal underneath, but anyway, it's sort of cool still. I'm really impressed with the fact that you can just do all this swapping on and off. If you put on all the poses, remember that you can open up the shoulders, put on all the effect parts, and really bring this guy to life. But one thing that's worth noting is that with the old high grade with the Titus there, that he's got really small side skirts. So these ones that hold the beam saber seem a little bit out of place there for the Adele. But overall, I'm liking the idea more and more. So if you happen to have a G-Bouncer and the old high-grade Sparrow and the Titus around, you can certainly have a lot of fun with this guy. Combined with the fact that he's got age one type mobility, there's already lots of pluses about this, but stay tuned for the final part where I'll have a list of all the good and bad things I could think of, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about the mobile suit, this video, and everything else with a comment down below. See you next time, everybody. Well, I don't think this video made us look very good.